What's the criminal psychology and the motive for why Brian Koberger allegedly committed the Idaho 4 murders? We're going to piece together all the key evidence to find out what could have been his motive. Now, let's get started. Brian Christopher Koberger was born on November 21st, 1994 in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, USA, to Michael, now 68, and Marianne, now 63. Both worked for the Pleasant Valley School District with his father as maintenance staff and his mother, who worked in special education. He is the youngest of three with two sisters, Amanda, now 35, a former actress who is now a school counselor, and Melissa, now 32, a marriage and family therapist. His parents filed for bankruptcy bankruptcy twice, once in 1995 and again in 2010. Brian graduated from Pleasant Valley High School in 2013 and was reportedly overweight through most of his life, was labeled as a creep and was bullied by girls but lost 79 pounds by the time he graduated high school and then allegedly became a bully late in high school, eventually doing hard drugs. He then attended technical school but dropped out. Eventually he went to school at Northampton Community College and then to Sales University, getting a bachelor's in psychology and a master's in criminal justice. During that time, he studied under famous crime author and professor Catherine Ramsland, where he studied the BTK serial killer intensely. After graduating from DeSales in 2022, he became a PhD student that fall at Washington State University, just seven miles down the road from the University of Idaho, where the murders would sadly take place. Of the notable things, he's an extremely strict vegan, never married, no love interests have come forward, he won wanted to become an army ranger in high school, was kicked out of a local bar for asking women if they lived alone, reportedly thought he was smarter than everyone else, posted this Reddit survey asking criminals what seemed to be vicarious and preparatory questions, and had no prior criminal record. A major question that we need answered that will help us understand the motive is how did Brian know the victims? Brian did not just randomly stumble upon their house the night of the crimes and haphazardly commit the crimes. We know this because police have his cell phone pinging at or near their house on at least 12 occasions before the crime. It also appears that the first time that he was at or near the house was late at night on August 21st, 2022. If this cell phone data is accurate of him constantly going to their house, that's stalker level activity. The house may have been a college party house, but they don't throw a big public party where randoms can easily walk in that often. Therefore, Brian seemed to secretly show up to their house several times uninvited to stalk, watch, attempt to enter, or possibly even enter. But how did he get to know the victims in the first place? We don't know exactly, but we can deduce it down to a few possibilities. He may have known someone who was going to party on the University of Idaho campus and came along. He could have met them in town, or he could have stumbled upon the victims in his social media feed and became obsessed. Additionally, a neighbor of Brian said that he mentioned he liked going to Idaho because the shopping is better there, which for Brian could be code for something other than food, gadgets, and clothing. Now let's try to piece this information together to zero in on a motive. Since his first time around the victim's house was on Sunday, August 21st, this aligns with a few key occurrences. First, that's just a few weeks after Brian arrived at his new school out west, getting ready for his first academic year far away from his hometown in Pennsylvania. All of the housemates have just finished moving in, and according to the University of Idaho academic calendar, classes started Monday, August 22nd. Yes, the next day. Therefore, according to police, Brian was at the victim's house late at night the day before classes start? From my lengthy experience in academia, there's usually no big public parties the Sunday night before classes start. So Brian was likely stalking one or several of the victims in the house that night from 10.34 p.m. to 11.35 p.m. But how did he know of their house in the first place? It could have been social media where one of the victim's photos or videos came up in his feed. <laughs> Or maybe he casually met one of the victims around town, were kind, physically attractive, and as servers to restaurant patrons, they would surely be extra polite and even more memorable. Therefore, all it would take is a few second conversation for Brian to know that they go to the University of Idaho. He reads her name badge, which is him her address, and then Brian sadly becomes her stalker. We currently don't know if that's exactly how Brian began stalking them, but it seems clear from police data, provided it's accurate, Brian was at least stalking Kaylee. Kaylee had mentioned to her family and friends that she had a stalker. Oh yeah, we've had a friend of ours be stalked before. It was Maddie who actually said that. So Maddie said it, um, and it was kind of like mentioning, like motioning to Kaylee too, like who was right next to her. So 
you could tell that like they obviously all were trying to keep Kaylee safe. A lot of people have been wondering if Kaylee had a stalker. She attracted attention. Whether that's a dedicated person following her around, maybe not. Even though Moscow, Idaho police oddly initially tamped down that claim. I do believe that the officers looked in it and, they, and I believe what they said, that there was no evidence there. We have heard mention that Kaylee stated she may have had a stalker. Detectives have been looking into that and to this point have been unable to corroborate the statement, although we continue to seek information and tips regarding that report. The motive for the murders appears to be stalking. I get that it's very difficult to understand why stalkers sometimes murder, because it seems counterintuitive. Why would someone murder someone who they're obsessed with? First, not all stalkers murder, because there's different motives for stalking. The criminal psychology of a stalker murderer is many times because their jealousy is so gripping and they know they can never have that person, they want to make sure that no one can have them. Brian possibly met Kaylee in person and found that she's someone he's attracted to, he apparently began stalking her, became increasingly more obsessed with her, possibly even attending the big parties at their house, possibly made a move and was turned down, continued to stalk in person and virtually on social media, continued to obsess to a point where his jealousy was out of control. Since he studied criminology and criminal justice combined with his hubris that he was smarter than everyone else, he surely thought he could commit the crimes and get away with it, which resulted in him planning it out. Additionally, this may not have been his first murder either. Brian Brian is a 28-year-old male, and oddly no love interests have come forward, which is quite rare, but seems to indicate that all of Brian's relationships were all fictitious and based on him stalking them. Therefore, Brian could be involved in other murders, which law enforcement should investigate that possibility. You may be asking, why would he kill more than just his target? Xana and Ethan could have spotted Brian at some point when he entered their house on the second floor, because Xana and Ethan were living on the second floor, and possibly wanted to keep them quiet or possibly even confuse authorities of the motive. As we said, Madison and Kaylee were sleeping on the third floor, which indicates that at least one of them was targeted, because Brian did not have to go up to the third floor from his entrance on the second floor but he did. We recently found out that they were all not fast asleep, specifically because Xana had a DoorDash delivery at 4 a.m. So although they were not sleeping, the housemates were taken by surprise because no one called police until very late that morning. As mentioned, it appears Kaylee was Brian's primary target. Kaylee was sleeping with Madison in Madison's room and Kaylee received the most wounds, psychologically indicating likely rage against her. It would make more sense for there to be more wounds on Madison in Madison's room if Madison was the the primary target. However, since there were many more wounds on Kaylee in Madison's room, this indicates that he was possibly looking for Kaylee. Additionally, when the murders occurred on November 13th, Kaylee just broke up with her long-term boyfriend Jack, which Brian surely saw Kaylee announce on social media. Therefore, Brian knew that Kaylee was not occupying a bed with a man that would possibly try to fend off Brian. So for Brian, it was the perfect time to finally strike when he knew Kaylee suddenly became a little more vulnerable. After the crimes, Brian allegedly returned to their house at 9.12 a.m., about five hours after the crimes, and was there for nine minutes. Many believe he wanted to retrieve the knife sheath he left behind in Madison's room. However, we don't know the exact reason he came back. We must remember that at that time, the police were not yet called to the house until at least two hours later. So he could have at least attempted to retrieve or tamper with the crime scene by attempting to retrieve the sheath or anything else he thought he left behind. It is very possible he was in their house again again a second time later that morning. I made a short video discussing all the criminal psychological reasons for why criminals return to the crime scene, so you may want to check out that short video after this one. It was recently revealed that Brian had discussed in online forums that he felt no emotion and little remorse, which likely indicates antisocial personality disorder, therefore making him much more likely and much more physically capable of committing these horrendous crimes. I've noticed that people choose to enter the professional mental health field because they are either mentally ill and seek to better understand themselves, or a close friend or family member is struggling with mental illness and they want to better understand them. The reason I bring this up is because do you recall what Brian majored in and what both of his sisters do for a living? Yes, Brian majored in psychology, one sister is a counselor, and the other 
is a therapist. It's possible his sisters became interested in mental health to better understand their troubled little brother, Brian, who may have been showing warning signs of a budding psychopath. There's still a lot of questions that will hopefully get answered through the discovery process as the prosecution builds their case to likely present at trial. I'll keep you updated. Now in the comments, what questions do you have about this case that you hope to get answered? Let everyone know in the comments below. And if you're not already subscribed to the Shake Podcast, you may want to do that because we discuss these current event topics in more conversational detail. We are everywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon. You can watch the show on YouTube everywhere you get your podcasts. That's where you can get the podcast shaked. Subscribe for more. Thank you.